all right guys welcome back today i'm super excited to be taking a look at the marvel legends danny catch ghost rider looks extremely awesome i just want to grab this box and rip it to shreds so i can get this figure inside here this is my uh, absolute favorite iteration of the character the design of the bike and the chain and the leather jacket and everything is just extremely cool in my opinion um, and they borrow quite a lot of those elements uh, like the chains and the leather jacket and stuff and spikes for Johnny Blaze nowadays um, but they first started using this with Danny Ketch but nonetheless as excited as I am to rip this box apart this is a review so first of all we have to start with the packaging so in keeping with the design that they've been running with for the 85 years of Marvel, same uh, pretty plain box, um, just uh, black all over, but they do have some nice artwork on the side. Unfortunately, when I tried to rip this tape earlier, um, I did rip part of the artwork, but that's my fault. Nice promo shots on the back there. You can pause it and read that bio. It's not very long. Nothing much on this side. Marvel 85 years. Same thing on top. Legal information below. Enough about packaging. Let's open this up. So before we actually start looking at the figure, I just wanted to run over this because there is some minor assembly required. There are the foot stands, which can either be pegged here or at the middle of the bike. It does come with the handlebars, which just pegs on right there. And it does come with front shield, which has uh, sliding mechanism which is going to slide into the grooves which are on the bike here so yeah looks pretty awesome let's take a closer look at the figure though so let's get into the details on ghost rider start with the face of course you can actually see they printed some Spooly effects inside the eyes to give it that sort of penance there look. That's really neat. I don't know if it's just mine, but there is an issue with the jaw where it just doesn't want to stay closed. Oh, well, it's, it's alright there, but then I realize there's a big gap right there in the teeth. 
So maybe that's a issue on mine. You can see a nice wash going on there. Translucent flames look pretty cool. Kinda wish they came up a little bit more. So down here doesn't look so bare. The jacket has that nice leather details going on. And this sort of design on top here is very, very specific to Danny Ketch. This chain is a rubbery, soft rubbery piece. Definitely would be nice to change that from metal one. Let's see. Coming on to the wrists and the belt. These are just a molded silver plastic. Would have been nice to have those actually molded in a darker color. And then the silver tips of the spikes painted. Definitely would have looked a lot better, I think. But as it is, it does look pretty decent. You can see on the back of the right uh, hand there does have spikes. This side doesn't have any. That's just how he was designed. Much like the boot. Has spikes on one side and none on the other. The pants does have a nice texture going through it as well. I did sculpt some pockets and stuff and even something in the pocket, a wallet or something. That's pretty cool. Got all your wrinkles and stuff. Again, would have been nice to have a wash on those. Coming down to the boots, very nice leather patterned. One thing he is missing uh, from this iteration of Ghost Rider is the uh, spurs. Did have like cowboy spurs on both sides of his boots. So I may have to track down some spurs 112 scale and see if those would work on him. Definitely would want this to be the best Ghost Rider it could be. And so this is how he looks. This is a previous uh, counterpart, which is the Toy Biz Ghost Rider, Danny Catch Ghost Rider. And as you can see, quite a lot of improvements have been made here, at least uh, proportion-wise and stuff. It would look, look to be around the same height. But damn, definitely uh, puts that other one to shame at this point. Though the painting on the Toy Biz one is still a lot better. But uh, just noticing the chain on the Toy Biz one. Let's see if we could uh, put this on him instead. The links could stand to be a little bit smaller, but uh, I think it does look pretty decent. Okay, let me know in the comments what you all think. So, moving straight into the articulation. He has, you can only look up about that far. And looks down about that far. Head does have some tilt, not much. Can get a down angled uh, look at him. The arms go up about that far, goes forward about that far due to this sculpted piece here, which I kind of wish a little bit different. But the arms do go all the way around, does have a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, really cool. Uh, the wrist do hinge and swivel. 
There is the usual ab crunch, which actually gets a pretty decent range and pretty decent range back. So pretty good. I think this figure is solely lacking a, um, a butterfly joint. That's what I think. And that would have helped it to sort of get past the design. Maybe they could have even made this over, like an overlay, like they did with a cap. So it wouldn't be too much uh, stiff. But that's about the best you can get his arms across his chest. Uh, he does have the swivel at the waist there. Legs do kick forward about that far about that far they split about that far but one thing you'll notice when you drop it back oh, it's the drop down legs so those could actually once you articulate it it tends to come down so I like drop downs when they actually add something I don't think it was totally necessary on this figure but nonetheless it is there I guess these pants could be possibly from a GI Joe um, so he does have the tie cut he does have double jointed knees and these are the the nice um, hard plastic knees and elbows so there is no gumminess about them is nice does have a boot swivel boots go up about that far back about that far and does have rocker so standard marvel legends articulation minus gummy joints i think that's uh, always a plus so getting into the accessories that comes with ghost rider you can see that he does have two gripping hands which come on him in package and those are for gripping the handlebars of the motorcycle as well as this other accessory which is the flaming chain which we've seen before and that does fit nicely into his hand like so it does come with Two alternate hands as well. One uh, gesture hand. And then he also comes with one fist. Nice that they put the spikes on the correct side. I wish he came with two fists, but I guess if he had to only come with one. At least it was the one with the spikes, right? So, looks really cool. And just gonna swap back his other hand so we could get into his main accessory, which is the motorcycle itself. motorcycle has these flame pieces that act as sort of stands and they are sort of a rubbery translucent piece and the tires sit nicely inside there like so the bike also does come with another flame piece which you plug into this part on the bottom and then you could have the bike looking like he's popping a wheelie which is really nice so we're gonna take a closer look at the bike and all the details let's get up and cl close and see all the gauges really nicely painted can't say the same for the medallion gas cap there. It is kind of sloppily painted. But with the naked eye, it does look alright. 
see these little details right here it's pretty cool and this matte finish on the bike is sort of a fingerprint magnet so yeah gotta be aware of that you can see some cool machinery sculpting going on inside there the aforementioned foot pedals which can be shifted to the front or it can be shifted to the middle I sort of wish there was one more port for it for the back because he does use that position quite a lot in the comics sort of the sport bike look if you look inside here you can actually see some more machinery going on there pretty cool the seat does have that nice leather texture the wheels themselves are sort of rubbery they have a little bit of give to them and they are painted with that uh, they are translucent but they have the yellow airbrushing going on around there and they do roll very well one thing I would complain on this bike about is the lack of the white parts on the back there so I actually took the liberty of making something myself which is just a piece of plastic I cut out and now I could just slide it down behind there and that sort of solves my complaint so the bike itself really really cool really awesome let's see if we could get him in that wheelie pose just for presentation sake so we put the chain in his hand get up and whip the net back sit him down see if we could get his hands into the handlebars That's pretty cool. They really did a good job with this uh, set there. There are some shortcomings, and we'll see that when we do the size comparisons as well. But for the most part, the figure is really awesome. So there was one aspect of the bike I forgot to show you guys, and that is this uh, shield piece on the front there. It actually is able to slide down. Because in the comic, he sort of uses that as like a battery ram. This, realistically, if you were doing the comic, it's supposed to be able to come down further like that. But it's still cool that they tried to include that in there. And plus, it's kind of useful to be able to adjust this. So, thought I'd mention that. So, for measurement. He stands about six and a quarter to the top of his head, but about six and a half to the top of the flames. And for the bike, at the highest point here, it looks to be about four and three quarter inches. And the length of it is about nine and a quarter, nine and a half, somewhere around there. Nine and a quarter inches. So here we have something of a Marvel conga line going on here. And this is just to show varying heights of some of these. Uh, so you have Thor being the tallest, of course. And you have Cap next. I would argue that these two are practically the same height. And you have uh, Giant Man. Slightly leaning forward, but he still is slightly shorter than Vision. And then you have where I think the Ghost Rider falls, which is in almost exact height as the Bucky Cap mold. And then, yeah, of course, you have the female Marvel Legends, Black Widow and uh, Warbird. So his height is certainly not ideal. It doesn't really bother me that much. But I just wanted to show this, just in case this is something that would determine 
whether or not you would get this figure or not. So hope this helps. And getting into how he looks with some other lines. Here's how he looks next to Mafex Nightfall Batman. Here's how he looks next to the premium DNA Earthworm Jim. Here's how he looks next to McFarlane's Nightfall Batman. So he looks next to Jada Toys Ryu. And here's a blast from the past. This is how he looks next to his old Toy Biz release. And this is how he looks next to Marvel Legends Ant Man. In closing, I think the figure is really awesome. There are some flaws, uh, namely the height of the figure should have been a little bit taller. Um, I would argue that the neck would could use a little bit more range as well, because I'm trying to get him into those hunched over sport bike looking poses, and it just he doesn't have the range to be able to do that. So if he could have looked up more, it would have been better. Uh, another thing I would like to say is I definitely think some butterfly joints would have been welcome here. Um, even the old Toy Biz figure had some butterfly joints, so for shame, for shame. He definitely should have had those. And mainly, I think that because of the set and the flame effects and everything that came with it, it would have been no... No um, real hassle for them to sort of finally do flames that are blowing back and give you like some sort of interchangeable flame maybe. I think that would have sort of certainly um, made this one stand out even more. But as is, the figure is really nice and I really am happy to own this. It is my favorite iteration of the character. So now that they have Danny Ketch, I really hope they do a Johnny Blaze uh, in his trench coat and Hellfire shotgun era. And also do a set like this with him on his bike. And also a set like this with Vengeance as well. So we could have all the spirits of Vengeance together. And I think that would be really awesome. Get to it, Hasbro. I hope this video helps anybody who was on the fence about getting this figure. I really think it's uh, a nice set and definitely worth the purchase if you like this character. So, until next time guys, y'all take care.